Welcome to part two of the missing third leg, how Satan stole a march on God's people. We read from the spirit of prophecy, it is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy. Uh, Once again, Ted Wilson, the Vatican's representative, What concord has Christ with Bial? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Bial? Or what part has he that believeth with an idol, infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Yes, we live in a different world today, folks. But the association, the eating of meals together, breaking of bread, rubbing elbows, is a backsliding church. So, let's take a look at the three angels' message now. We know that they're of the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19. But there's also a second commission. And uh, the first one is, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, folks, that witness is you and I if we're faithful. Satan declared that angels were holy. They did not need God's law and that human beings could not keep it. So God is going to not only have his son. But he's going to have 144,000 that reflects the image of Jesus fully. So as we go out into the world proclaiming the first, second, and third angels' messages, the way we eat, the way we dress, the way we talk, the truths we give, how we respond to persecution, we're going to be a witness to those who are weighing in the balance, those who are weighing truth versus error. We are going to be a living witness to bring souls into the truth. So let's take a look at the second gospel that must go all around the world. That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. So the health message, which is the right arm of the third angel's message, the third angel's message is going to go all around the world, and the health message is going along with it. That's how important the health message is. We cannot pick and choose what we want, what we don't want out of that message. Just as we can't from the Bible or the spirit of prophecy. The present truth for this time comprises the messages, the third angel's message succeeding the first and the second. The presentation of this message with all it embraces, including the health message, is our work. Letters and Manuscripts, Volume 15, page 1.2215. So there it is, folks. You have it. The first, second, and third angel's message is our work. It is simply that the second and third angels followed the first in point of time, but that they went with him. The three messages are but one threefold message. One message, threefold or three parts. There are only three in the order of their rise, but having risen, they go together and are inseparable, which includes the health message, because the health message is part of the third angel's message. So it's one message, folks. You cannot uh, disregard the first angel's message and think you're going to come out of Babylon. These messages have to be received and accepted in their order. So, the work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis under a most discouraging, forbidding, 
circumstances. So what is this work that the church has failed to do? By the ministry of the word, the gospel is preached. By medical missionary work, the gospel is practiced. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, I put before you this day, is not doing God's medical missionary work as designed by God and given to Sister White. That is the work we're failing to do because that work clears up the frontal lobe of the brain so people understand the eternal consequences of their decisions. They're weighing truth. So, we have reached the time when the work cannot advance, while wrong principles are cherished. Sister White said that. The work can't advance. Oh, but you say, what, is there 15, 17 million Seventh-day Adventists? Read early writings. Sister White calls the majority of us nominal Adventists, or nominal meaning in name only. So what are the wrong principles that the work cannot advance? She says work, not the number of members. The work, the first, second, third angel's message. So something's going on today that's not right with these messages. The first angel's message, fear God, which means to stop sinning. Give glory to him, which means allow the Holy Spirit to change and develop your character. To stop sinning, you have to confess and repent. And then the hour of his judgment has come. The third angel's message come out of Babylon. The second angel's message, Babylon has fallen. There's something wrong with the second and third angel's message. And also the first, because many Adventists believe they're going to be sinning until the latter rain, which is a deadly error. I have been shown that in our educational work, we are not to follow the methods that have been adopted in our older established schools. There is among us too much clinging to old customs. And because of this, we are far behind where we should be in the development of the third angel's message. Come out of Babylon. Far behind in her day, which was 1908 when she wrote this. I'm sharing with you, we're even further behind today. So let's delve into it. This is an article. <clears throat> from the um, Adventist World Magazine, March 23rd, 2023, which was um, a month, a little over a month ago, by Ted Wilson. He states, first of all, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not and never will be engaged in ecumenical activities as defined as comp compromising our precious belief in Christ and his 28 fundamental beliefs as expressed by the church. So let's dissect what Mr. Wilson has just said. First of all, these are man's beliefs. They've gone from 15 to 27 and now 28. They had to, my understanding, add the 28th because they forgot God. But let's take a look at this. The Adventist Church is not and never will be engaged in ecumenical activities as defined as compromising our precious belief. So if Ted Wilson and his crew does not believe the ecumenical movement is not compromising our beliefs, then we're engaged with them. Is that, is that not what's being inferred? But yet, it is a backsliding church that lessens its distance from Rome. All right. The second issue I have here is the 28 fundamental beliefs 
Are those really Christ's beliefs? That's what the whole issue is. Doctrine, as we learned in the Join No New Organization presentation. So let's take a look at this. The current Sabbath school quarterly on three cosmic messages. Talks about the second angel message found in Revelation 14.8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. The, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 14.9 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive of his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Now, this is out of the King James, which is very important. <clears throat> Unfortunately, when the second angel's message was described in this quarterly, the fall of Babylon was lightly brushed over. It hardly referred to the papacy. It referred to it very lightly. I've shared with you since, I believe, 1931 yearbook in the official Seventh-day Adventist publications, we have not identified the papacy as the beast of Revelation 17. And here, Babylon in Revelation 14.8. So, who is Babylon? Let's find out from the great controversy. Babylon is said to be the mother of harlots. By her daughters must be symbolized churches that cling to her doctrines and traditions and follow her example of sacrificing the truth and the approval of God in order to form an unlawful alliance with the world. The message of Revelation 14, 1-20 announces the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure and have become corrupt. Since this message follows the warning of the judgment, it must be given in the last days. Therefore, it cannot refer to the Roman church alone, for that church has been in a fallen condition for many centuries. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of the Revelation, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. According to, his scripture, to this scripture, many of God's people must still be in Babylon. And in what religious bodies are the greater part of the followers of Christ now to be found? Without a doubt, in the various churches professing the Protestant faith. Great Controversy 382.3. So why couldn't the presenter of the Sabbath School Quarterly quote this quote. I believe it is because we did not want to offend our Protestant brothers who are in the first day churches, who are in the ecumenical movement, or who, who are also in other Seventh day denominations like uh, Seventh day Baptists and etc. The Sabbath school quarterly, to me, is a clear indication that the one group of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, remember there's two groups that are formed, is clearly in the ecumenical camp. <clears throat> the third angel's message, the Catholic Church is not mentioned in the Sabbath school quarterly, totally overlooks it. So if you don't know what Babylon is, how are you to come out of her? So, the broken blueprint. This is the book by Vance Farrell that shows you what our educational system should be and why it is not. It's the broken blueprint. And I'll tell you, just like the hospitals uh, wanted to be accredited, our universities and our schools want to be accredited, following the example of the world. Now, so closely is health related to our happiness that we cannot have the latter without the former. A practical knowledge of the science of human life is necessary in order to glorify God in our bodies. 
It is therefore the highest importance that among the studies selected for childhood, physiology should occupy the first place. You see, we don't know anatomy and physiology. We don't understand how those 10 doctors, water, sunshine, fresh air, rest, can they really cure us of COVID? Can they really cure us of cancer? No, we have to go to the world and get our prescription drugs and our chemo. No, folks, you don't understand anatomy and physiology. You know more about the engine of your car. You know more about your computer. You know more about the fashions of the world. You know the stats of the uh, professional athletes, but you don't know physiology. And without a knowledge of the sciences, it is impossible to glorify God in our bodies. That's how important the health message is, folks. So let's continue. How few know anything about the structure and function of their own bodies and of nature's laws. Many are drifting about without knowledge, like a ship at sea without compass or anchor. And what is more, they are not interested to learn how to keep their bodies in a healthy condition and prevent disease. You cannot serve Christ with a diseased body. Satan is the originator of disease. At the beginning of this presentation, uh, part one, I shared with you, disease is how Satan enfeebles the body. Success there means the ruin of the whole soul. The body is the only medium for the upbuilding of the brain. It's all connected, folks. Connect the dots here. The right hand is used to open doors through which the body must find entrance. This is the part the medical missionary work is to act. It is to largely prepare the way for the reception of truth for this time. Cleaning up the frontal lobe. A body without hands is useless. In giving honor to the body, honor must also be given to the helping hands, which are agencies of such importance that without them the body can do nothing. Therefore, the body which treats indifferently the right hand, refusing its aid, is able to accomplish nothing. Yes, you may bring members into the church baptized and one day they're out the back door the next. You may pay pastors for every baptism they perform, running the church like a business, but is, that is not the work. Continue. All through this country, work must be done that has not yet been done. The medical missionary work must be recognized. Those who go forth to engage in the work of the ministry must be men who, after many years of experience, have not yet no appreciation of the medical missionary work and sh should not be appointed to preside over our churches. So if you have a pastor who's been at this many years and they do not appreciate the medical missionary work, they are not fit to preside over our churches. That's not me. I'm just the messenger. Your soul salvation is at stake here. They are not walking in the light of present truth for this time. Those who love the truth and appreciate the question of temperance in all its bearing should not be placed in the charge of a minister who has not heeded the light God has given upon health reform. What help can a man be to a church if he is not walking in the light? Folks, if your pastor is not upholding the health message, the difference between potluck and fellowship dinner is this. Potluck is just that. You have no idea what's in the food, the cheese, the sugar, the preservatives, it's not even labeled. A fellowship dinner, everything on that table is based upon the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Whole food, plant-based meals. No dairy, no cheese, no egg. And if the pastor, the elders, the, those who are in charge of the health ministry department are allowing the foods on the potluck table 
in your church, you are in the wrong church. Your soul salvation is at stake. Continuing, no man should be set apart as a teacher of the people while his own teaching or example contradicts the testimony God has given his servants to, be, to bear in regard to diet. For this will bring confusion. His disregard of the health reform unfits him to stand as the Lord's messenger. Testimonies, volume 6, page 378. What is confusion? Babylon, folks. That which is on the tables as it relates to our diet unfits the pastor, the elders, those in charge of the health department. It unfits them for their position. So, <clears throat> the church is not now the separate and peculiar people she was when fires of persecution were kindled against her. Now is the goal become dim. How is the most fine gold changed? I saw that if the church had always re retained her peculiar, holy character, the power of the Holy Spirit, which was imparted to the disciples, would still be with her. The sick would be healed, devils would be rebuked and cast out, and she would be a mighty and a terror to her enemies. Does that sound like the Seventh-day Adventist Church today, folks? Or are we sitting and whining and dining with the enemy? The enemy of truth. Now, I shared with you earlier, it's not about numbers. It's about doing the work. Let's take a look at this vision. In vision, I saw two armies in terrible conflict. One army was led by the banners bearing the world's insignia. The other was led by the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Standard after standard was left to trail in the dust as company after company from the Lord's army joined the foe. Now, it's not about numbers, folks. We got to get this medical missionary health reform part of the equation correct. Or many of you, including myself, are going to go out. Now, the word company here could mean two, three, four, five people. It could mean a family. It could mean a church family. It can mean a whole conference. God does not define what that word means. I have read with my own eyes what Sister White has read, written. Whole, uh, whole churches will be lost. I have not yet read the quote, as some people claim, that whole conferences will be lost. But nevertheless, God does not define what a company is. So, company after company are going to join the foe. And tribe after tribe from the ranks of the enemy unite with the commandment-keeping people of God. And of course, this is after the shaking. That's why company after company is going out. The shaking is a most terrible ordeal. Nevertheless, it must take place. So we have until Sunday law to prepare. Now, let me ask you this question. Have you ever noticed in Revelation 14, it begins with the first angel's message? But have you noticed Revelation 18 begins with the second angel's message? Since 1844, when Christ went from the holy to the most holy, the sanctuary is being cleansed. You cannot cleanse the sanctuary until God's people stop sinning. Since 1844, fear God. Seventh-day Adventists, or God's people, are required to claim the promise of Jesus Christ, get help and strength from the Holy Spirit to get the victory over sin. Where sin abound, grace much more abounds. We just have to hold fast and endure and wait for 1 Corinthians 10, 13 for Christ to make that way of escape. Revelation 18 begins with the second angel's message. 
Because between 14 and 18 is the passing of Sunday law. And all that can be, will be shaken out. So those who remain will go forth and give the third angel's message. They will be sealed. They will receive the refreshing. Medical missionary work is the right hand of the gospel. It is necessary to the advancement of the cause of God. Make no mistake about it, folks. God said it. As through it, men and women are led to see the importance of right habits of living. The ten doctors. The saving power of the truth will be made known. Every city is to be entered by workers trained to do medical missionary work. As the right hand of the third angel's message, God's methods of treating disease will open doors for the entrance of present truth. That's our work, folks, present truth. The first, second, third angel's messages. If you want to learn to do the medical missionary work, go to originalhealing.ky, click on the training button, and sign up for the medical missionary work that's coming up in June. So, the truth for this time embraces the whole gospel. Rightly presented, it will work in man the very changes that will make evident the power of God's grace upon the heart. It will do a complete work and develop a complete man. Then let no line be drawn between the genuine medical missionary work and the medical gospel ministry. Let these two blend in, giving the invitation, come for all things are now ready. Let them be joined in an inseparable union, even as the arm is joined to the body. Time is rapidly passing. Our publications are numerous, but the Lord calls for men and women in our churches who have the light to engage in genuine missionary work. Let them in all humility exercise their God-given talents in proclaiming the message that should come to the world at this time. So, we have the law of God, the moral law, and we have God's health law. Jesus said, think not that I have come to destroy the law and, or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus Christ fulfilled the health message, that 40-day fast. On the cross, when he said, I thirst, but did not drink. And all through his ministry, when he healed the sick, cast out demons, gave the blind their sight, etc., etc., etc. Councils on Diets and Food, page 17. The health law is just as holy as the moral law. You violate one, you violate the other. So, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one dot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. The health message is still valid today, folks. We have to live it. If we're weak, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Christ will give you the strength and the power to get the victory over your uh, and my wrong habits. I haven't obtained. My family hasn't attained. But we're striving. It's our goal. And day after day, we try to come up higher and higher, not only in the gospel, his moral law, but also in the health law. God has promised us victory. He has promised us all the help we need to get the victory. Let us believe. Let our faith be that faith that overcometh the world. Thank you for listening to part two. We will continue our message, part three.